On This is the CHL, we visit the North Bay Battalion as they host the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. CHL alums Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Jonathan Huberdeau talk about their days in junior hockey. And we revisit the St. John Sea Dogs MasterCard Memorial Cup Championship. Hello, I'm Sam Cosentino and this is the CHL. This week on the show, we check out brothers born nine years apart whose career paths took a different route after their time playing for the University of Saskatchewan Huskies. Our CHL alumni features a player from each of the Edmonton Oilers, Philadelphia Flyers and Florida Panthers. The 2011 MasterCard Memorial Cup Championship game pitted fellow Prince Edward Islanders and coaches Dave Cameron of the Mississauga St. Michael's Majors up against Gerard Gallant and his St. John Sea Dogs. But up first, the North Bay Battalion became a huge success in year one after its move from Brampton, making it all the way to the OHL final before eventually losing out to the Guelph Storm. Stan Butler and the Battalion are back and looking for more. Here's a day in the life of. North Bay is widely known as the gateway to Northern Ontario. It's a small city with a big heart and a known love for the game of hockey. It's only been two years since the Ontario Hockey League brought a team back to the city after a decade-long absence from the league. But the battalion are here to stay, and the team is established as one of the strongest and most competitive in the league. Head coach Stan Butler is the leader of these troops and has been with the franchise since its inception in 1998. He's one of the most experienced coaches in the league and has built this program from the ground up. North Bay's players come from all over Ontario, and they're committed to playing for this club that is roughly a three-hour drive north of Toronto. Nick Paul was a member of the national junior team that won gold this past winter in Toronto. He's a top NHL prospect and a team leader among many talented young players. The North Bay Battalion may not be the most well-known team in the league, but like any squad that goes into battle, their grit, toughness, size, and tight unity are what carries them to victory. Zach Poirier is a 16-year-old rookie from Mountain, Ontario. It's not very big. We don't have like uh, like 12 teams, like, and we're not very big like the GTHL. But, I mean, still lots of skill and uh, it's very physical. Like all OHL teams, players come from across Ontario to develop their game, and that means living with billets who become as close as family over an eight-month season. The first meeting was a little bit awkward. Uh, I mean, I'm not too people friendly but once I got to know them they made me feel right at home and welcome and uh, every morning when I get up I have breakfast and I eat and Janice makes it for me so uh, and they just they make me feel so at home here. So. Poirier's billets give him everything he needs to succeed off the ice and they also remember the days when North Bay lost their OHL team back in 2002. I used to go to all the games and uh, it was good for North Bay, but when they left, it was devastating. There's not too much going on in North Bay. It was a heartbreaker for all the fans. We we're very glad that it's back. The former OHL first round pick has left his friends and family behind to pursue his hockey dreams. I want to make it as far as I can. I want to do my best and uh, my, with whatever career I can have, and hopefully I'll make it to pro hockey. But you definitely have to mature. I mean, uh, with being at the rink on time, you have to go to school. Like, every day like you do at home, but uh, even when you're tired, if you come home at two o'clock from a road trip the night before, you still have to go to get up and go to school the next morning. So, I mean, you have to be responsible and you have to be a lot more mature, and uh, I think that's helped me out. His goal against the Erie Otters was a dazzler, and is possibly a sign of great things to come in the next few years. Now here's Poirier with the chance. Nice move by Poirier, Although it's a game day, Zach is off to school for a morning of classes. Two years ago, Brett McKenzie won the OHL Cup with the Oakville Blades, parlaying that success into a first round OHL draft selection. I want to improve myself as a player, I want to uh, become better everywhere, um, more points, more everything. 
I obviously want to be signed in the NHL. That's my goal in the future. And obviously with a lot of hard work, that could be possible. This is his NHL draft year, and despite dreams of playing in the NHL, school remains an important part of his life. My goal is obviously to play in the NHL. Um, that's been a goal since I was young. But I think school overall is important for me and my parents. My mom's a teacher, so she pushed me to do a lot of school. But I think as a backup plan, it's always good to have good marks in school so that I can make it in the future in anything. Along with many of his teammates, Mackenzie attends Chippewa Secondary, and he gets to experience firsthand the excitement that surrounds the team in North Bay. It's obviously pretty cool. Um, everyone here knows who we are. We obviously have to have a good image. Um, also, for ping pong tournament, playing in that, that's obviously pretty fun. But uh, having a rink real close is really good. You can go work out, easy access, and all that's good stuff. With the game just hours away, some of the players are going through morning workouts to stretch out some final kinks. Miles Liberati is an American-born defenseman hailing from Pittsburgh. When I played, it wasn't very big. There was five or six teams in, in the area, and one or two of them were stronger than others, and um, everybody was trying to get on those one or two teams, and now it's getting a lot bigger because of guys like Crosby and Malkin being drafted there, and uh, people are getting really excited about it. His career started with the London Knights before the battalion, and it's his OHL experience that led him to being a Vancouver Canucks draft pick. It's been awesome. It's been uh, definitely a professional level of play, and I mean, I'm not sure exactly what the NHL is like, uh, but I would assume it's very close to that, and the way they treat you as players, and the way you're at the rink every day and in the weight room, I don't think it gets much better. While his team heads home for a break before the game, Coach Stan Butler spends some preparation time in his office. We're a development league, so when we say development, that doesn't mean just develop them as hockey players on the ice. I mean, I think if we do our job correctly, that means develop them on the ice, off the ice, in every situation. So, you know, we got to understand that we've got players that are moving away from home, uh, transferring schools, moving in with a, a new family, and then have the expectations of playing hockey. But I think as uh, coaches in junior hockey, we've got to understand that you know, if school's not going well, if, if building's not going well, if adapting to a new city's not going well, it will affect their play on the ice. So, you know, you've got to make sure those three areas are covered. And it's not easy. Um, you know, a lot of days you're jack of all trades, but they're necessary things that you need to do in order to have success as a hockey team and have indo individual success for each and every player. Finally, with just a couple hours before puck drop, the team's leading goal scorer, Nick Paul, arrives. Paul was a Dallas Stars draft pick, but his rights were traded to Ottawa in the deal that sent Jason Spezza to Texas. I uh, woke up one morning, uh, had breakfast, went to go work out, uh, just do a quick little pump, and my agent called me, and I was just uh, sort of off when he was calling me at that time in, in the summer, so I picked up. He said, uh, you've been traded, go turn on TV, uh, you're going to Ottawa. So, at first, I was, I was like, what the heck is he talking about? Go turn on TV, and then Jason says the name on TV, and I was right under it with Alex Guptill and Chase on. So uh, just a great feeling, and everything happened so quick. Uh, got a call from Ottawa. They set up my uh, flight, flew out that night, and the uh, next day I was in Ottawa doing training camp. So uh, really busy, hectic day, but uh, it, it was a good one for sure. Standing six foot four inches tall, Paul is a big body that seems NHL ready. He's got a winning pedigree as he helped Canada win the gold medal at this year's World Junior Hockey Championships. Yeah, CHL has been amazing. Uh, coming to OHL as a young guy and just moving away from home, learning how to uh, time management, what to do, uh, just being responsible, doing laundry, making food when the parents aren't there. And uh, it just really helped me grow up. And uh, not only on the ice, it helped me off the ice, just helped me, helped me mature so much as a, as a person. And then. Obviously, on ice, there's nothing you do better here at the rink every single day. Uh, practicing, working out, going to school. So, uh, just really helped me grow up as a person. And then, as a hockey player, it helped me so much. Uh, nothing better I can ask for. CHL's been great to me, and I've had a blast these last couple years. With one of the top teams in the CHL, the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds in town, a battle of two northern clubs ensues. The battalion go on to win proving they are one of the elite teams in Ontario, too. North Bay is the gateway to Northern Ontario, and chances are teams will have to go through them 
if they're hoping to win this year's league title. When we return, a trio of NHL centers discuss their days in the CHL. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Sean Couturier and Jonathan Huberto have these commonalities. All three were selected very early in the first round of the NHL draft and all three started their pro careers as teenagers. The Edmonton Oilers are so proud to select from the Red Deer Rebels, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. As the top pick in the 2011 NHL entry draft, Ryan Nugent Hopkins arrived in Edmonton with plenty of expectations. Highly skilled, but thin in stature, he adjusted well, notching 52 points in 62 games and finishing second for the Calder Trophy. Though he was only 18, Nugent Hopkins made the jump thanks to a strong development in Red Deer. Looking back, honing his game in the Western Hockey League was always the game plan. When you're that young, you're not really thinking like which is the quickest route way to get to the NHL or anything like that. But for me, it was just a decision that I grew up watching the, the Vancouver Giants play. Uh, and it was something that I just always kind of wanted to do. I wanted to play in the WHL. Selected by the Rebels first overall in the 2008 WHL Bantam Draft, Nugent Hopkins wasted little time adjusting to Major Junior. In his first season, he potted nearly a point per game and claimed the WHL's Rookie of the Year honor. The skilled playmaker needed only one more year of seasoning before joining the pros, though he knew he was ready for the challenge. Uh, every team seems to be a really good team. There's so many good players across the league, and uh, I know in Red Deer, they treated everything like we were uh, pro hockey players already, and I think that uh, really helps you develop and uh, helps you get ready for that, that next step, whatever it is. The Florida Panthers are proud to select from the St. John Sea Dogs, Jonathan Huberdeau. Picked two spots after Nugent Hopkins in 2011 was MasterCard Memorial Cup MVP Jonathan Huberdeau. He didn't create the biggest buzz when his second season with the St. John Sea Dogs started, but Huberdeau skyrocketed up draft rankings after posting a 105-point sophomore season on the heels of a 35-point debut campaign. He was among an explosive arsenal that led St. John to a Quebec Major Junior Hockey League title, and his breakout was a key to the team's success. The first year I got there, we had like so, so many great players, you know, it was hard to play a lot of minutes, but then I think the second year, more confidence, you know, we were like first or second line, so we have more minutes and the power plays and, uh, you know, just points were, were coming with it. And I think uh, our team was great too, so I mean, it was pretty easy to get, get some points when you win uh, games like 6-2 uh, or something. What wasn't easy for the Quebec native was leaving home for New Brunswick. The nine-hour distance from his family, along with the challenge of learning a new language, presented serious hurdles. Huberdo, however, took both battles in stride. It's tough when you leave, but after, you know, it's more like English too. Like, I, was, I wasn't, wasn't really good in English and that. Came there, I came there and I learned English there, so it was, I mean, it was a good experience for me to go, uh, you know, learn a new language. And I think uh, when you're with your team, it's like your second family, so I think you get, you bond, bond together and I, you know, I had a great billet too as well. Uh, the Philadelphia Flyers are proud to select from Drummondville in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, Sean Couturier. Picked eighth overall by Philadelphia, Sean Couturier was another CHL star scooped up in the top 10 of the 2011 draft. His three seasons with the Drummondville Voltigeur were loaded with QMJHL hardware. A league title in 2009, the league's top scorer award in 2010, and league MVP in 2011. Yeah, it's a great honor, but I mean, I had uh, we, we had such a good team uh, my three years. I was, I was lucky to be uh, part of a, a great organization uh, in the Voltigeur, and I really appreciated my time there, and my teammates were great, and uh, it was a lot of fun, some, some good times. Like the other CHL grads in his draft class, Couturier is now a significant building block on his NHL squad. He's carried the talent he polished in the queue up to the sport's highest level, solidifying himself as a talented two-way forward with the Flyers. That's no surprise to the 22-year-old, though, who knew he would transition quickly after preparing himself well in Drummondville. I felt pretty pretty confident in myself. I know I I had the uh, the abilities. It just uh, I, I had to get used to the speed of the game and uh, I mean the strength of the guys. The guys are a lot stronger, a lot bigger, and. Uh, 
I mean, there was uh, my first year was uh, was quite an experience for uh, adaptation wise, but uh, I mean, uh, it's been uh, it's been a great ride so far. After the break, we examine two brothers who played WHL and CIS hockey before heading down different career paths. Born in Saskatchewan, brothers Derek and Dan Hulak are nine years apart. Dan played for Swift Current in Portland, while Derek never left the Saskatoon Blades. Both played for the University of Saskatchewan, with Dan using his education package to move into the business world, while Derek used his time in the CIS to ink an AHL contract. For many Canadian Hockey League players, the CHL Scholarship Fund gives them the chance to pursue an academic degree while continuing to compete in the sport they love. Dan and Derek Hulak are brothers who both took advantage of the opportunity, graduating from the WHL before moving on to CIS hockey. The CHL Scholarship Program is really second to none. I mean, at first you get to play hockey in the best developmental league in the world and it gives you every opportunity to advance as a hockey player um, but for those of us that choose to take our scholarship um, you know we get to go to the best universities in Canada as well and uh, and play hockey at an elite level while pursuing that degree you know it's not uncommon to see eight or ten former Western Hockey League captains all playing together on one CIS team. A lot of the players um, are, are from Major Junior in, in Canada, whether it's the WHL, OHL, or the Q. Uh, you know, in the, in the Western uh, part that I, I'm from, we have a lot of our players are from the, the WHL. Um, you know, my last last couple of years, there was only you know a few players that weren't you know former WHL players. After each earned their diploma, one brother entered the business world, while the other continued to chase his dream in professional hockey. You know, we had very similar career paths through the Western Hockey League and through the CIS. Uh, for me, when I was done my university degree, I had uh, the opportunity to advance in business, and I, I've been very grateful for how that has worked out. My brother, on the other hand, has continued to pursue his passion of, of playing hockey, and he's now having a you know, a great campaign in the American Hockey League with the Dallas Stars organization. For me, I wouldn't be here uh, if it wasn't for my four years at the CIS. When, when I came out of the WHL at 20 years old, you know, I definitely wasn't ready to make, make the jump to pro hockey. And, uh, you know, playing four years at the University of Saskatchewan, uh, you know, playing minutes there, you know, having the, the coaching staff and the team there really uh, helped develop my game. Older by nine years, Dan is in full stride raising his family and building a career in wealth management. For younger brother Derek, his dream of playing professional hockey is blossoming and bringing great pride to his family. And both Hulaks credit the CHL for helping them get there. Coming up, we'll look back at the 2011 MasterCard Memorial Cup between the St. John Sea Dogs and Mississauga St. Michael's Majors. The 2011 MasterCard Memorial Cup featured the likes of Ontario teams, Mississauga St. Michael's Majors, the Owen Sound Attack, the Kootenai Ice from the Western Hockey League, and from the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, the St. John Sea Dogs. Long before Jonathan Huberto and Gerard Gallant hooked up with the Florida Panthers, they won a national championship with the Sea Dogs. When they collided on opening night, St. John won the hockey game 4-3. No one will ever remember that when this eve is all said and done. In Mississauga, with the game's first power play, they were two out of seven on the power play in the first meeting of these teams. Simone Dupre back in the lineup. His wrister, he scores! Short-handed, Simone Dupre has opened the scoring. Well, Mississauga gets caught at the St. John Blue Line. Simon Dupre with that great speed decides he wants to take it the distance. And goes up top, blocker side on J.P. Anderson. Patrick to Zach Phillips. Phillips in the slot. Big rebound. And a backhander by Kirk Patrick who went wide to the target. Huberto Phillips. He scores. First of the tournament for Zach Phillips. And it's 2-0 St. John. 
J.P. Anderson makes the original save, but it's the rebound that causes the problem. Kirkpatrick keeps it alive. He'll then pick up the, can the puck and quick passes from Huberto to Phillips to finish it off. This is a critical juncture in the game. I know it's early. Three would be a long way back for the host team. The shares paddle down. Grace nearly stole it. Now he does backhander under the share. They poke it in. They're going to say the whistle blew here for sure. And immediately Matt Kirk calling this thing off. 95 points for Zach Phillips during the regular season. Tied for six in the Quebec Major Junior League scoring parade. That's the one thing you have to watch and guard against if you're Mississauga. Sezikis up the middle to Shug. In front, scores! Riley Brace! And Mississauga right back in it. All good offense started from the back end. Good first pass from the blue line to Sezikis. Now, three-way passing play, fantastic. You see Mississauga do that so often. Beauregard to the middle, wrist shot, and it was blocked by Parente, who continues to give Dave Cameron some great minutes. He's feeling it a little bit. Nearly found the net on his last shift. Down low, Smith, Pelly, wrap around, went right through the crease. Bully wants to clear the zone, unable to. Shot in front. Souza by Jacob Desairs. And what will D'Souza be saying? That's three great A opportunities, and he's stopped again by the right pad of Jacob Desairs. Mayor, Rishon, blocked. Gets it up and it held in by Durazio. Majors doing everything in the last few minutes, but tie the game. Phillips with Huberto, a two on one for these great players. Phillips, Huberto. Jonathan Huberto with 3.43 to go. I bet they're going crazy at Harbor Station in St. John. Oh, yeah. So that's going to do it for the first time ever. A team from the Maritimes have won the MasterCard Memorial Cup. Their mission is accomplished. And isn't that something neat to see? Well, that's it for another edition of the show. I'm Sam Cosentino. Be sure to join us next time on This is the CHL.